Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. One of the biggest barriers to EV adoption is access to charging and charging station reliability. There are many EVs that I review that are great options, but it's very frustrating when you're on a trip and arrive at a charging station with issues. Over the years, there have been vast improvements in the charging infrastructure. Recently, there have been announcements which may change the landscape of EV charging in the near future. So today, I wanted to dive into where we are now and what the future may hold for charging your EV. It's important to start off with a quick overview of charging connectors that are common in North America today. The J1772 and CCS are standard on EVs sold today in North America. CCS is an extension of the J connector which enables it for DC fast charging. There's also CHAdeMO, a legacy connector that is in the Nissan LEAF. Lastly is NACS, which is an acronym for the North American Charging Standard. Tesla was a bit ambitious when they renamed their connector, but maybe they had some insight into what the future holds. This list of connectors is kind of long and it can be intimidating for new owners. Throughout this video, I'll be focusing on the North American market. And if you want a more detailed breakdown of these charging connectors, check out this video. What charging infrastructure do we currently have in place? Focusing on DC fast charging, we have a few options. There are three main players in the US, Electrify America, EVgo, and Tesla. Rivian is also creating their adventure network based on CCS. Tesla has a few open chargers worldwide for non-Teslas, which I will revisit later. Electrify America stations mainly support CCS and they usually offer one CHAdeMO plug per site. EVgo supports CCS and is more welcoming to CHAdeMO. Many other sites currently feature NACs through an adapter that's attached to the charger. The process of charging a vehicle varies. With a Tesla supercharger, you simply plug in your Tesla vehicle and it initiates a session. There are no screens, buttons, or credit card readers. It's billed through your Tesla account. This is a service which is now known as Plug and Charge and has been picked up by EVgo and Electrify America. Alternatively, at Electrify America and EVgo, you can slide a card, use their app, or tap your membership card. Personally, I think it'd be great if all chargers were required to have a credit card reader or support tap and pay. Having a membership or an account with each network is rather frustrating. In the United States and Canada combined, there are over 8,900 public DC fast chargers in place. However, there are still many areas that lack any kind of charger. It's no secret if you followed any EV news, one of the most common topics is about charging station reliability. Electrify America is famous, and not in a good way, for having some of the least reliable charging stations. Over the years, they've changed vendors and models of their equipment several times in pursuit of a more reliable network. They've even partnered up to create their own homegrown solution to charging. Unfortunately, they're not alone. EVgo often suffers from similar issues with their charging stations as well. The problems with these stations can range from screens not working, cables out of order, payment methods unavailable, or sometimes they're just completely offline. The biggest issue is that once these charges go offline, they stay offline. It seems to take months for them to get repaired. Service delays are probably the biggest issue with these networks currently. Everything breaks with use, but things need to be fixed quickly and efficiently. The Tesla supercharger network doesn't go unscathed. Their issues are more congestion related. With the amount of Tesla vehicles that are out on the road, it becomes stressful pulling up to limited charging stations. It leads to a bit of chaos and disorganization between Tesla drivers themselves. Who was there first? Who is next? And why are some of you charging to 100%? Though Tesla has expanded sites on many occasions to keep up with demand. Big changes are coming, so what is going to happen next? Well, a lot of what is going to come involves tapping into Tesla's charging network and the NAX connector. In March of this year, Tesla opened up a few pilot sites in New York and California with an adapter they called the Magic Dock. Back in 2021, they had opened up their network to other auto manufacturers in other parts of the world. It was great to try that out when I was in Spain. I charged up the Renault Zoe using the European CCS2 standard. The Magic Dock used in the US is simply a Tesla to CCS adapter. The charger has also been modified to be able to speak to the car using the CCS protocol. To initiate a charge, you need to go into the Tesla app and begin a session by tapping on the corresponding stall. Tesla's monitoring these pilot sites and gathering feedback before they continue to expand. So far, this program has been successful. There's a 150 kilowatt maximum for people using the adapter, and it's also important to know that there are some limitations for 800 volt cars. The biggest complaint I've seen is about the cables being too short, but that's something they're looking to resolve with the Supercharger version 4 release. Continuing the timeline, in the month of May, we heard news from Ford. Big news, Ford EV customers are going to gain access to Tesla superchargers as Ford will be providing a NAX adapter in 2024 and providing a software update to make their cars compatible. 
In 2025, they'll be installing NAX ports on their vehicles. So upcoming F-150 Lightnings, Mach-E's and future cars will be installed with NAX. Ford dealers are also planning to add more fast chargers by early 2024. This leads me to GM. This is also huge. Not long after we heard about the Ford and Tesla partnership, GM announces a collaboration with Tesla to add NAX into their electric vehicles beginning in 2025 as well. GM's chair and CEO stated that it could help move the industry toward a single North American charging standard. And that could be true if other auto manufacturers also start to incorporate NAX in their cars too. Like Ford, GM will have a Tesla adapter for their current cars and future builds will have NAX integrated into their vehicles. They will also be creating an adapter for NAX-enabled vehicles to charge on CCS charging stations in the future. These automakers changing over to NAX feels like they're the first two very big dominoes to fall in place for setting a national standard away from CCS. Aptera deserves a mention as the first automaker to adopt the NAX connector. They're still working on bringing their vehicles to production, but it is a commendable move. Lastly, ABB dropped an update saying that they'll be adding NAX as an option to their products as well. ABB is a big provider of EV charging technology. You most likely have seen their products used by Electrify America and EVgo. They will incorporate the NAX connector once testing and design steps are complete. So hopefully we'll be seeing these soon. Luckily, with the public release of NAX, Tesla did make the work a little easier as the standard going forward will be using the same CCS communication protocol. Testing still needs to be done, but hopefully this speeds up their release schedule. I'm guessing we'll be hearing more from automakers and charging providers in the near future about their decisions to either stay with CCS or move to NAX. So why are these companies supporting NAX? Why doesn't Tesla just switch over to CCS? Why did Tesla create NAX in the first place? A lot of people like to compare Tesla and Apple over using their proprietary charging connector. But there was a reason why Tesla made their own rather than using CCS. Looking way back to when Tesla made the Roadster, the AC charging connector was in a weird state. Afcon was gone, Magna Charge was gone, but a replacement hadn't been selected. The J connector standard hadn't been solidified yet, so they made their own special Roadster connector. It was big, bulky, and ugly. When they were designing the Model S, they recognized that if everyday people were going to buy an electric car, it needed to have DC fast charging. Only problem is, there wasn't a DC fast charging standard except Chatamo. CCS didn't even exist yet. So again, they created a new connector, the Tesla O2 connector. A slim connector that utilized the same pins for AC and DC charging and was capable of up to 90 kilowatts of DC fast charging. Over the years, that charging standard has been updated and can now support up to one megawatt or 1,000 kilowatts of DC fast charging using the same connector. Simply put, NAX is a better design connector than CCS. You might not see it in the videos because I edit it out, but I struggle a lot with these unforgiving charging cables and the connector isn't any easier to work with. One of the best parts of the NAX design is its rounded edges and rounded inlet. Because of this, you can very quickly connect it to the car so long as you're pretty close to the target as it's designed to be self-aligning. This can't be said for CCS. The connector is a complex shape with narrow flat sides. It's not difficult to plug in CCS, but you can't do it swiftly. The move to NAX is a big win for EV adoption, but as we start these transitions, EV manufacturers and charging companies will have to be prepared. There will end up being more crossings of Teslas on networks like Electrify America and EVgo, and more non-Teslas charging on the supercharging network. This may end up causing congestion in both scenarios, but offers more capacity for everyone as a whole. Tesla already stands up new sites at a very quick pace, but they'll have to start moving even faster now to keep up with the national EV sales, not just their own. On new locations, it's rare to see less than 12 stalls, but locations should probably start with a minimum of 20 stalls now. Lately, there has been a boom in the installation of Tesla chargers. It seems like every day new locations are opening. In Quartzsite, Arizona, there are currently 36 stalls, which is great. Across the street, they just broke ground on a second site where there are going to be an additional 88 stalls. That means 124 stalls total. Pretty sweet, right? I think this change over to NAX would be a good opportunity to explore a queuing system for charging sites. This is especially true during holidays when travel is high. A bit of waiting never hurt anybody, but humans can be disorganized and sometimes short-tempered. If there are a way to have a number pop up on your screen or app letting you know which charging station to go to or when you're next in line, that could be helpful. I don't know how doable that would be, but it would be nice. Another thing that'll need to be resolved is ease of accessibility for non-Tesla EVs at Tesla chargers. Tesla charging stations were built for Tesla vehicles since they all have their charging port located at the same spot on the car. The cable is the perfect length for Tesla vehicles to pull through or back in stalls. 
However, not every non-Tesla EV is going to have their charging port placed on the rear driver's side. This becomes a concern when something like a Ford F-150 Lightning comes up to charge and they take up two spaces since the cable can't reach and they have to park a certain way to accommodate. Tesla's already looking forward to resolving this with the version 4 supercharger which incorporates longer cables. EVgo and Electrify America will have to continue expanding and supporting their charging networks. We can't just have Tesla running the show, we need options and pricing competition. NACs will have to be added to their existing charging stations. EVgo currently has it on their systems, but it's only 50 kilowatts. We have vehicles that can accept hundreds of kilowatts. 50 kilowatts isn't going to cut it anymore. Speaking of, EVgo recently announced that in addition to their current NACs integrations, they'll be directly adding the connector to their chargers. Blink has also said that they'll be adding NACs to their DC fast charging equipment. Blink will be providing an all-new 240 kilowatt DC fast charger with both NACs and CCS connectors. Most importantly, these DC fast charging companies need to fix stalls that are broken in a timely manner. I've seen stalls out for a long period of time, even after multiple reports to their customer service. They also need to install more than one stall. It's silly to only have one option at a shopping plaza. If that one charger is occupied or it's broken, then you're out of luck. This is also true in travel corridors where there are only four Electrify America stalls. I recently went to a meeting discussing the utilization of NEVI funds for Arizona. Almost all of the sites proposed were only built for four stalls. We need to build with the future in mind. Four stalls is too few. This isn't an inclusive list, but all of these are hurdles that the charging networks will need to overcome if EVs are going to take on mass adoption. Now that it seems like companies are willing to work together, the future looks brighter today than it did yesterday. I think if you're an EV owner, the most important takeaway is that you won't be left behind no matter what brand of car you own, unless you're a Nissan Leaf owner. Automakers are already planning for adapters, so you can use any car on any network. It's a dream come true. Plus, having competition between charging companies can be good and lead to lower pricing for fueling. Personally, I'll be getting my car retrofitted to use the CCS adapter and protocol because I know it'll be around for a while. Plus, snacks on something like Electrify America may require the retrofit as well since it'll be using the CCS communication standard. But that's an unknown at this point. These upcoming transitions could be a huge step to overcoming one of the biggest barriers of owning an EV. With more reliable charging stations and access to charging, choosing an EV might become a more enticing choice. Will this be a step toward a single charging standard for North America? I sure hope so. What other auto manufacturers will join and which not? We'll have to see what else is to come and how it plays out for the future. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content. Have an EV I can review? Email me at info at Follow me on social media at KaiZV and Kai Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website for more EV resources at KaiZV.com. That's all for now and happy charging.